My name is Katherine Gomes, and in this video, I'm going to show you some different ways you can do the Unit 2 Skills Practice and Exploring Creation with Mathematics Level 1. All of this is laid out for you in the teaching guide. The skills are shown on the pacing guide in the front. And then there's a description of everything I'm gonna show within the book. This is just the same thing in video format. So the Unit 2 Skills Practice is a lot of fun. You're gonna be looking at a lot of addition facts. So it's all in like this section here and then on the next page. So we're gonna do the addition facts up to 10, but we're not gonna just give our child a whole pile of facts and say, okay, learn all these. That's not how you learn most effectively and that's not what leads to long-term retention. Instead, I've grouped them in fact families. And the first group is gonna be the addition facts up to five, like two plus three, two plus two, the really easy ones. And then we're gonna build onto that, all right? After the addition facts up to five, we're gonna focus just on the facts that make 10 because they are so important. Six plus four, seven plus three, five plus five, you gotta know those. And the faster and you know more um, deeply you memorize those, the better. Finally, we'll do the facts that make six, the facts that make seven, the facts that make eight, and the facts that make nine. Now, in the teaching guide, I've broken it apart, like different ways to practice each of those skills. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you all the different ways because they really can kind of be interchanged with the different fact families. All right, the easiest way to practice is to use flashcards. So I grab these for like two bucks and they're great, especially on a busy day when maybe skills practice wouldn't happen if you tried to do something more complicated. Just sort through, pull out the ones you want your child to practice. Don't give them the whole box, that's overwhelming. And have them practice super quick, okay? Now, there is a way to kind of make this a little more fun really quickly. Take some sheets of paper and write down answers on it, like six, 10, seven, Lay these all over your living room and then give your child a stack of flashcards. And then what they do is they look at the flashcard and they have to run and lay it on the correct paper. We played this as a family, it was super fun. Um, I was amazed by how excited they got and they got some exercise. The other thing that's a nice outcome of it is at the end of the game, on the six paper, you'll have the facts, five plus one, six plus zero, four plus two, and they can see the fact family. So that was really cool. I liked that that, you know, that result came out of that. So that's flashcards. Another thing that you can do is revisit some of the games that they learned in their lessons. So when they first learned addition, a lot of the opening activities were fun games that you can play again. So for instance, this is Addition Strikeout. Let me try to hold it. It's a super simple game. You do a game board with the numbers 2 through 12 on each player's side. They roll dice, they add it together, and they cross out the sum on their side. The winner is the first person to get all the sums crossed out on their side. I almost nixed this game from the book because that's so simple but I played it at a math day at my house. That's where this picture came from. And the kids were so excited and so into it. I'm like, okay, I'm putting it in. But if your child liked this game during this lesson, you can use it again to review addition facts. The same goes with Stack'em. Stack'em was just a few lessons later in the student book. And in Stack'em, they use dominoes and they add up the sum of the dots and they have to put it in certain spaces, all right? So pretty similar. And if you don't have dominoes, we have those printable for you on the Book Extras website. So just think you can always do that is revisit a game. I didn't put the same games in the student book over and over again because I didn't want it to be too repetitive. But if your child really likes a game, be sure to recycle it, all right? Um, another thing is the book extra site. Ah, oh, the book extra site is an author's dream. Whenever I have extra ideas or things that some kids might need, but not every kid, we just put it up there for you. So it's there if you need it, but you can print what you want, okay? So we have lots of resources on there for the fact practice. Here's one example. We have these fact puzzles. And so you cut them out and the kids have to match which facts 
go with the five, which facts have a sum of six. We also have just like straight up worksheets. If you're a worksheet person or if your child likes worksheets, you can print some of these. Um, another one is a great game. This one is specifically for tens, but you can change it. It's called Fishing for Tens. It's probably my favorite game. So you need Uno cards or numbered cards. I like Uno cards because we already own them, so no additional cost. And they have the number zero, so two bonuses. Um, if Fishing for Tens follows the rules of Go Fish. So you deal seven cards to each player. And in your hand, to make a match, you're not going to do like a three and a three. You're going to do something that makes ten. So I have a seven and a three. So I have a pair and I would lay that down. And then I'm um, seeing here I have a four. So I would be asking like, does anyone have any sixes? Super fun. And you can give your child a reference sheet. I made one like this because uh, one of my students was struggling to remember. And it's okay if they're looking at something like this as they play. Or you can give something like this to a younger student and then they can still play because they know the pairs and they're already learning addition facts. Isn't that great? Another variation with these UNO cards is a game that I call Spill and Find, and it's code for mommy doesn't have a lot of time, but we need to practice. So what you do is you take a bunch of numbered cards and you, the mom, you spill them all over the table or the homeschool parent, you know, whoever's doing this, you spill it all over the table and you set a timer and you tell them make as many nines as you can or make as many eights. You pick the number and they make as many pairs as they can during the time. What I love about it is because of the timer, it works really well if you're like, we really only have a few minutes. We got to get to history. We got to make that Viking longhouse. You know, it's a crazy day today. So this is a great one if you're feeling a little pressed for time. All right, one last one I want to show you that's so simple and it's great. Um, it's amazing to me that it works so well considering how simple it is. So in advance, you need to prepare a paper like this. Put whatever sum you want them to make in the middle and then put the numbers like zero to seven on one side and scramble the order on the other. It takes you one minute, right? Just tell your child, okay, match the numbers on this side with what would make seven on the other. And they just go quick, shh, 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 shh. but it's a great way for them to remember all the different ways to make seven. So those are my ideas for you. I hope you have a good unit two skills practice.